spreading the fingers wide, pressing your shins backwards and down, pressing your fingertips forwards and down. Inhale deeply and exhale, tuck your tailbone down towards the floor. Roll through the vertebrae all the way up into a cat stretch. As we inhale, we shine the tailbone up towards the sky. We roll in the opposing direction, coming into your cow stretch. Exhale, tuck tailbone down towards the floor. Roll through the vertebrae. Inhale. Really focus on the lengthening of the tummy here. Think about stretching through the muscles of the tummy. And then as we press into our cat, really think about lifting the abdominals towards the back. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, close off. Last one. Before we come back to our tabletop, we drop the elbows to where the palms remain. And then we sink our hips back, send our heart space to the floor, either resting your forehead to the ground or your chin. If we rest the chin down, then we look forward to the front of the mat. If we rest the forehead down, then we close the eyes down. When you're ready, press into the right hand, thread the left arm underneath coming into a gentle twist. Deep breath in here. Before swapping sides, sending left arm long, right arm right under. Inhale back through center. And then when we're ready, you round through the spine in that cat-like stretch, lowering yourself down in your own time. Well done. Elbows come directly underneath your shoulders. Palms can come together. Inhale deeply. Relax your head forwards. Just taking a quick stretch through the back of the neck. Inhale here. Flatten your palms down towards the floor. Extend the back of the neck long and lift that right elbow off the ground. Lower the right elbow back down and swap sides. <coughs> Lower left elbow down and swap sides. Well done. Just gently stretching through the side of the body. If this feels quite gentle, then you might slide the elbows back Slide the palms underneath the shoulders and gently twist the heart space side to side, stretching through the side body, aiming for length. Last breath in. Before lowering down, tucking the toes and pressing into your plank. Lifting your hips up and back into your downwards dog and beginning to pedal through the heels one by one. Lifting the left leg towards the sky, gently stacking left hip just over the right and then plant that leg down, swap sides. and come back through center. When you're feeling ready, coming all the way into lovely kneeling position. Taking your right hand over onto your left side of the outer thigh and coming to a gentle twist. And then take that back hand and reach all the way up and over into a lovely crescent moon or lateral bend. Hold that arm down, close off the body. 
Inhale deeply and then take that right arm back, come into a twist open on that right side. Well done, take that right arm over, stretching through the right side of the body. And then close off the body. Well done. So we should be feeling quite nice and warm now. So we're going to start off with our first abdominal movement. For our abdominal, mo abdominal movements today, we have one minute, five seconds on the timer. However, if you cannot do that whole time, then just do as much as you can, take a rest and then carry on. The rest could be completely laying down still, or it could be going to a slightly easier uh, modification of that movement. So our first movement will be lift, crunch, return, lower. Option two, lift, crunch, return, lower. Option three, lift, crunch, return, lower. Okay, so when we're ready, legs on the ground, tabletop or extended, hands by the temples, three, two, one. Option three, we lift, we then draw the leg into tabletop, re-extend that leg, lower down, one, two, one, two. Option two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Option three, one, two, one, two. Sorry, option one, one, two, one, two. So either way, we should be feeling a little warm through the upper abdominals, through the obliques. Well done. Carry on here at your own pace. Allow yourself to aim with the armpits as opposed to the elbows. We're not thinking about crunching across the body. It's about a lifting of the armpit up and over. Well done and relax. When you're ready, your next movement is rolling one leg, rolling the other leg, rolling both legs. Now, you don't have to do the both legs part, you can just stick to the alternating side if you prefer. So when you're ready, send your arms and legs long. We draw left leg in, crunch the shoulders off the ground. Right leg in, crunch, peeling the upper few vertebrae off the ground. Both legs in, peel hips and shoulders off the ground. So you're really scooping from both ends of the vertebrae on that third and final repetition. So it's abdominals press back, scoop the hips, scoop the shoulders. On the first two, when we have just a singular leg drawing up and in, it's just the shoulders scooping up into the movement. Really focus on the imprint of your abs to the back, back to the floor. So we're thinking about pressing the abs towards the back as if you're wearing a really tight belt. We're thinking about pressing the back to the floor. If you were to stand up, you'd want to be able to see where you were laying on the mat. Well done, last one. Good job. Well done, so from here, draw both legs into a tabletop both arms to the sky, and we're going to be doing a nice gentle one because we have just done two very difficult ones back to back. So we're gonna go into dead bugs. That was option two. Option three is a straight leg option. And then option one, you would just be moving the arm and the leg in the same direction. You can have the heels down in option one. However, lifted is a nice in-between between two 
and one, so you can really challenge the abdominals, not bearing too much weight into the legs. When you're ready, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. It's opposite arm, opposite leg, moving in opposing directions if we are in option two or option three. We still have that imprint. Any movement where we are on the back, we're focusing on a double imprint. Abs to back, back to floor. Well done. If we are in option one, it's still opposite arm, opposite leg, but they are moving in the same direction this time. Really focus on keeping the engagement through the abdominals rather than resting into the feet. Well done, guys. Nearly there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, hug your legs in. Our next movement, we draw the knees wide, click your heels together, and we're gonna be sending the legs away at a 45 degree angle. If that's too intense, we go higher towards the sky. If it's too gentle, go lower towards the floor. We're going to be doing a froggy, come back, ankle tap, come back, okay? So we have those two back to back. If it gets too much, just do the froggy, okay? Three, two, one, go, go, go. Ankles clicked, fingers by the temples, press the legs away at a 45 degree angle, then come back. Come forwards, tap the ankles. Now as we press the legs away, we still have the feet in this lovely V shape. When the legs are fully extended, you're focusing on the thighs really pressing towards one another. So really squeeze the muscles together, crunching forwards and up. Squeeze the muscles together, crunching forwards and up. Good job. Carry on here at your own pace. It doesn't matter if the thigh muscles are not actually touching. As long as we have that energy of really pressing them together, then we're going to get that lovely toning for the thighs as well. Keeping that lovely external rotation through the thigh. Whew. Sorry, through the hip. When we extend the legs forwards, we still want to have that imprint. We want to think about the neck being extended long rather than pulling it. Well done, rest in here. We're going to roll onto one side. We send that top leg long. We draw the base forearm so that it is parallel to the top of the mat. Your base elbow is directly underneath your shoulder. Your base shin is parallel to the bottom of the mat and your top arm lifts. Option one, exhale, inhale. Option two, exhale, inhale. Option three, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Okay, so a little hip drop as well. When we're feeling ready guys, we go in three, Two, one, we thread it under and up, lower, then lift. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. It's up to you whether you add in that hip drop. If we are in option one and you want to add in a hip lift, that is an option as well. So that would look like this. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Like so. So wherever we are, whichever variation suits you, we're thinking about aiming for length from the heel to the crown. Well done, guys. Really trying to keep a straight spine elbow into the top of the back of the neck. We're not relaxing down through the obliques. Well done. Other side whenever you're ready. 
We go in three, two, one. Thread the needle, lift, lower, lift. One, two, one, two. If you would rather take just the threading of the needle, and we draw on there into that lovely rotation, then lift. Just ensuring that you're not rotating too far. We don't need much to get a lot out of this movement. So we really want to focus on control where possible. Good job, guys. Lovely job. If we're on the ground, really focusing on not relaxing through this area here. We want to stay lifted so that we are straight from tailbone to the top of the back of the neck. So that as we rotate, we are keeping the spine perfectly straight. Good job guys, and relax down. Well done, we're coming onto our back for our single leg stretch. So this one here is going to look like this. Option one, one, two, one, two. Option two, we come up into a gentle scoop, hands on inner thigh, outer shin. We go one, two, one, two, like so. When we're ready, three, two, one. One, two, one, two. Hand is just resting on that inner thigh and outer shin. It travels down, travels back up, travels down the outer shin travels back up naturally as the leg is moving. It's not really moving down the leg as much as the leg is moving up and down. Keep your imprint, abs to back, back to floor. The back of the neck is long. You can imagine that you're just trapping a little satsuma here. So we're not squishing it, but we're also not letting it roll away. Just keeping it there. Your gaze is up towards the sky. Well done guys, nearly there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good job. So from here we're going into our reverse crunches leg drop. So that's going to look like this. Reverse crunch. Leg drop. Option two, reverse crunch. Leg drop. Now we do actually want to leave a little bit of a gap between the leg lift and the reverse crunch just because we don't want to use any momentum or rebound off the ground to then go up into our reverse crunch. Okay, when we're ready, three, two, one. Reverse crunch, your legs don't have to be perfectly straight, they can be bent. Reverse crunch, press the ceiling away, bend the legs, option one, hinge from the hip, keep your imprint, relift, extend from the knee, flex through the feet, press the ceiling away, Control it the whole way, especially on the descent from your reverse crunch. If we're doing the straight leg drop, then we drop the legs. You can hover them, ensure that you've still got that imprint, and press. Drop, pause, lift, pause, press, pause. So the pausing is where we're going to get that element of control as well as going as slowly as possible through each part of the moving note, the moving parts of the movement. Make sure that you're breathing the whole way through. Last one. Good job. Well done, guys. So, it's warm. 
we're going to go into our next movement, which is going to look like this. Your legs are a bit more extended so that we can come fully up. Your arms are back. We're going to come all the way up. We're going to tap the ground, tap the ground, all the way back, like so. So it's sitting up, coming into a twist. Um, it's not gentle. So if you would rather do a bit more of a diagonal crunch, which will look like this, one, two, then that is absolutely fine, okay? When we're ready, we go in three, two, one. Come up, twist, twist, forwards, and arms peel back. Come all the way up, twist, twist. I tend to change up the direction of where I'm twisting each time. So coming up, going right, then left, coming all the way back. Coming up, going left, then right, then all the way back. And that tends to just keep it nice and even. Make sure that we're not dominant on one side. Make sure that you're breathing nice and fluidly here. We don't want to be retaining the breath as we're moving. We are exhaling as we crunch. Inhaling, exhale, exhale, inhale back. Exhale forwards. Exhale, exhale, inhale back. Exhale, lift. Inhale at the top, open the chest. Inhale back, good job, last one. And relax, good job, well done. So your next movement is leg circles. So that's going to look like this. Movement one, we go clockwise, then anti-clockwise. Movement two, you're drawing, rather than just a circle, clockwise and anti-clockwise, you're drawing the figure of eight. Then coming back, up. You'll then go in the other direction, like so, okay? So this is hard on the hip flexors, Harder on the abdominals, so just be really kind to your body. Listen to what feels right for you. Ready? When we're ready, we go one, two, and go. Clockwise, and up. Anti-clockwise, then up. If we're doing the symbol of eight or the infinity sign, then we go right, then left. We come up right. Then left. We then go the other direction. Go down left. Then right. Come up left. Then right. Good job. So just listen to your body. Make sure you're prioritizing your imprint. You can take your hands off the ground. So if you find that you are pushing into them, that can be quite a nice way of ensuring that it's all coming from the abs. You could even place your hands onto the abdominals to make sure that they're not bulging upwards, but rather they are staying imprinted, pressing towards the back. Easier said than done. If you're finding it very difficult, stay higher. So you can do the infinity symbol, but not go so low. Okay, last one. And relax down, well done. Take a very quick stretch, send your arms and legs low. Imagine that you're the rope in a tug of war. Inhale. And our next movement is up and over, up and over, or if you want to do option two, arms are down and you are going up and over, up and over. Okay. Hard on the hip flexors, so if you need to have a bent leg for either of these, like so, or like so, then that is absolutely fine, okay? When we're ready, three, two, one. Go, go, go. So it's either reach up and over with straight legs or reach up and over with bent legs. You also have the option to start with your arms down by your side, 
Coming up into more of that B crunch with straight legs or with bent legs. In the V crunch, we come up with more of a straight spine. So it's straight on the way up, but on the way down, there is a little bit of sequential control. We don't want to just stand straight back down with a straight spine. We want to power up straight spine and then control it down. Power up, control it down, okay? Power up, sequentially back. So we're thinking about a bicycle chain, just connecting link by link until the head relaxes and then straight on the way up. Sequential and then powerful on the way up. Last two. Last one. And relax. Good job. Well done. So we're going to come onto our side. Drawing right forearm parallel to the top of the mat, right shin parallel to the base of the mat, left leg long, right arm long. So this is our start position here. We're going to either crunch for option one or option two. We crunch, drop the hip a little bit. So we have a variation of this where we keep the hips lifted like this. And then we have the variation where we drop the hip like this. And then we have a variation where we keep the hips lowered the whole time. So take which one feels right for you. When we're ready, come into your start position. And we go in three, two, one. One, two, option two, drop the hip. Option three, keep the hip lifted. Whichever one you do, still focus on that straight line from tailbone to the top of the back of the neck, especially if we are in this variation where we are lowered through the hips, we don't want to be relaxed here. So we don't want to be um, in this kind of curved spine where we're lifted through the head, dropped here. We'd like to be lifted straight through the spine, crunching. Okay, That's going to really help ensure that we are engaging through the obliques. Good job, guys. <sighs> Nearly there. Three, two, and one. Good job. Well done. Coming onto the other side, scooping your legs round. Draw that top leg long. Your base shin is parallel to the base of the mat. Base forearm is parallel to the top of the mat. And your top arm extends and we crunch. Reach, crunch, reach. Option to lift your hips. Crunch, reach. Good job. Allow yourself here to focus on where you can feel it the most. If it's just the hip flexors or just the outside of the glute, lower it down, focus on the obliques wrapping around the tummy and go into that option one. And that's if you can just feel it in the lower portion of your body, because we'd like to really focus on the obliques, the abdominals here, really think about tightening a belt, putting it really nice and firm so that we are lifting those muscles up and in ensuring that they're engaged and driving the movement, essentially. Good job, guys. Nearly there. And relax. Good job. So we're going to come onto our fronts. We're doing our hip drops side to side. Option one is hip drops. Option two is scorpions. So option one will look like this. Hip drops side to side. Nice and simple. Scorpions will look like this. Similar movement, but we lift one leg into a bend, tap it down next to you. 
Okay, so when we're ready, we go in three, two, one. Now we are on the forearms rather than the palms. Hips are lifted, drop, drop, side to side. If it feels too uncomfortable, allow yourself just to hold either a forearm plank on your knees, a forearm plank on your toes, or you can do a little tiny mini sway to sway, sway side to side, sorry, if that feels okay for you, because we don't always feel comfortable for everyone dropping the hips fully side to side like so. If you want to take it up a notch, lift, tap, one, two, lift, tap, one, two. Keep the hips nice and firm in between the heels and the shoulders. dog to stretch from this one. Well done. When you're ready, coming onto your back. We're going to be going into our V-twists. So we're coming into this lovely V-shape. You do have the option to float and drop your leg rather than lift your leg towards you. Okay. Make sure the fleshier parts of the buttocks are behind and to the side so that you can feel your two sit bones grounded down. Come into a little hinge, keep your spine lovely and straight. So we're focusing on that lovely straight spine, abs pressed to back, single imprint here, forearms stacked, when you're ready, shoulders down and away from your ears. Let's put the time on. We twist, 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 twist. Make sure you're breathing. Exhale, exhale, inhale, inhale. Good job. Really nice. Well done. Now, if you. Oh, Oh no, I already started it. Oh, I'm still going. <laughs> have to do double time otherwise. Allow yourself to ensure that your spine is straight. If we start, start to scoop backwards, take a moment, redraw the shoulders down and away from your ears, redraw the spine straight, abs to back, because we like to prioritize our straight spine in this one. Nearly there. Good. And relax down onto your back. Draw your legs up towards the sky and hug them in towards you here. Breathing deeply. Just a little stretch. Well done. We have one last strong movement of today and that is going to be our scissors. So we're going to be starting with the legs away. We cross, one, two, this is option two. Option three, lift the head, neck and chest. Pull, pull, well not pull, don't hug, just draw in, inhale, exhale, exhale. Option uh, one, start here, just cross halfway. The legs gently crossing like so, okay. When we're ready, we go in three, two, one, go, go, go. So option one, your legs are simply crossing, lovely bent position, focus on your imprint. Option two, hands can be on the legs here, outer thigh, sorry, inner thigh, outer shin, or you could have your hands down like so. And then option three, hands on the outer shin, inner thigh, head is lifted, and we go for a double exhale,
focus on that control part of the movement here, the crossover. This is very challenging, so we do want to slow it down. And then we've got that lovely stretch sensation through the entirety of the lower body here. You can keep a point, you could go for more of a neutral foot, or you could even go for a dorsiflexion. Just be mindful if you do go for a dorsiflexion that you're definitely not pulling your legs. And hug your legs in when you're ready. Well done guys, so send your right leg long, hug your left leg up towards the top left armpit. Draw that leg through centre and then over towards the right side of the room. Your right hand can rest on that outer left thigh, your left arm can go out to the side. And then swap sides, draw your right leg up towards the right armpit. This should feel quite nice, a lot of our abdominal movements require quite a lot from the hip flexors, from the thighs. And then draw that leg through centre. Make sure you're taking lovely big belly breaths here. So we release away that imprint. And we really allow the tummy to fill with breath as we breathe in. Well done. When you're ready, rolling into a comfortable seated position. Drawing your legs into a nice, gentle, bound ankle pose. Take the interlace around the toes, draw the spine straight and open through the chest. Well done, send your right leg long. Draw your left uh, sole of the foot right into the thigh. Draw your right arm out and come into a very gentle Crescent moon. Well done, swap sides. Right leg in, left leg long, left arm out, right arm over. Well done, come back up into a nice tall position, any seated position of your choosing. We come into a gentle twist. Other side. Well done, and you are all done. Good job.